Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to LinkedIn Heroes. Today, we have the founder of KX Pilates, Aaron Smith, an award-winning fitness innovator and entrepreneur who's built a business in less than a decade from 20K in the red, in debt, to a 68 Studio International franchise turning over $25 million. Here to tell us about his entrepreneurial journey and some of the practices that he's picked up along the way that's attributed to his success, none other than Aaron Smith. Welcome to LinkedIn Heroes, interviews with entrepreneurs making an impact on the world's largest social media site for business professionals, LinkedIn. I'm your host, Nathaniel Bibby. And today, our guest, Aaron Smith, is joining us. Aaron, where are you based? Which city in Australia are you tuning in from? Unfortunately, Melbourne, Nathaniel. So you're right in the heart of it all at the moment when you're, you're back in lockdown. Correct. Stage four lockdown, an hour a day for exercise or to go shopping, and that's about it. Uh, unfortunately, we're, we're not permitted workers, so no help from childcare or kinder as well. So um, with my wife in the business, um, I'm full-time stay-at-home dad and juggling the business as, as well. So it's lots of fun here in Melbourne. Yeah, I can imagine. Hopefully, it'll be behind us soon. Um, so tell us a bit about your, your business. How did you get into it? What do you do? Explain a little bit about your background. Sure. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, well, Cakes Pilates started in 2010. Uh, prior to it starting, uh, my background growing up was uh, I was an overweight teenager. Um, I had a knee reconstruction at about 17 and a half and uh, I kind of blew out to 104 kilos. Um, I was always a, a heavy sort of teenager, but uh, I loved my sport. And then kind of one day said that's enough, completely turned my life around through fitness and, and nutrition, studied everything I could from, you know, diet, um, exercise, different types of training, got in the gym pretty hard and um, went, dropped down to like 83 kilos, completely ripped, wow. changed the way I completely looked, my confidence, uh, everything about my life basically changed. Um, and in saying that, when I went back to my 10 year high school reunion, no one knew who I was. So that just showed really? um, yeah. Also, awesome. that was kind of my fitness change. Uh, and then from there, my, I always kind of knew, um, I was lucky at about 14, my father had owned his own business for 45 years uh, and he kind of taught me about, you know, owning, owning businesses is one of the best ways to get ahead in life. So in the back of my head, I always knew I wanted to start my own business, just didn't know what was in. Um, obviously, when I fell in love with fitness, um, I changed all of my studies at university. At the time, I was doing, um, I was doing a science degree uh, in trying to get into business. I changed all my all my uh, subjects to like accounting, marketing, finance. I failed them all in the, in the first semester uh, and then realized that I would then switch back to, to more of an exercise and sports nutrition sort of style. Um, so excelled there, uh, became a personal trainer, worked in a gym out in South, Southeast Melbourne, uh, really excelled at, uh, at becoming a personal trainer and gym there. And then, uh, and then I started to travel. My passion of travel came in. Um, I was on and off two years in America. I'm a really big snowboarder, so uh, on and off there, and then ended up in London for three years. Found the style of Pilates in London. Uh, it was it was basically the first studio in London of its kind. Very different than the traditional Pilates that was currently out there, or the rehab uh, Pilates uh, in the uh, in the physio sort of space. Uh, we were looked at as basically the entire rebels of of the Pilates industry there, but the studio and the business excelled. I fell in love with the style. I fell in love with the fitness. Uh, and then that was my goal to bring it back to Australia and start my own brand and did so in 2010. Um, so what, what was the um, business in the UK called? What was the uh, It started originally as called Butte Camp Pilates. Oh yeah. Uh, later, later to be renamed to Boot Camp Pilates, they attempted to rebrand to try and attract more males, which, uh, in my opinion, it was a bit of a demise. It's a female fitness uh, brand and fitness style, a majority female, I should say. Um, yeah, so that's that's where they are now. Um, very different to where we are here. So, yeah, awesome. Do you still snowboard? I do. Yes, I'm a yes, I'm a keen so I skier. To... Skier. I I could never get myself to go down the slope sideways. Yeah, no, it's um. I started skiing in between my dad's legs at two. Uh, when snowboarding became cool in the 90s, my, I've got two older brothers, switched to snowboarding when yeah, I was about awesome. 10 and uh, been loving it ever since. So, and I, I had to cancel two ski trips 
uh, this time around because of, of COVID. Course. But luckily, I, I was six weeks in uh, in Vale over in Colorado at the start of the year as our wow. ten year celebration for the business. So awesome. it was a lot of fun. Awesome. Good to get that in. So a lot of the people listening to LinkedIn Heroes are entrepreneurs um, at all different stages of their entrepreneurial journey. And as you know, entrepreneurs are constantly overcoming challenges. Um, what I like to do is ask the guests on this series about what's one of the biggest or one of the big challenges you've had to overcome um, throughout your career that um, you, you found quite challenging and how did you overcome it? Yeah, so... Look, there's been many. Uh, it, was a great, it was a great question to, to ponder on, um, mainly because, you know, uh, being 10 years in business, you know, I was, I was actually listening to a webinar yesterday with the co-founder of Netflix, um, Mark Randolph, and he was saying, there's no, there's, no, um, there's no good ideas out there. It's all about having an idea and making it into a good idea with trial and error and failure, et cetera, which uh, a part of me agrees with. There's been a lot of things I've been... Um, good at but a lot of things I haven't been good at over the years and a lot of expensive lessons as I call it but look one that points out to mind uh, and probably a bit closer to my heart was so I stepped down as CEO two years ago uh, Selena Bridge is now the current CEO of KX Pilates doing an amazing job but my passion stopped being running um, running a franchise uh, franchising is a very interesting beast uh, and uh, the bigger you get a lot of you know challenges come down and and, and she had that experience uh, coming from a previous female fitness brand of uh, you know, 150 plus uh, stores. Um, so I thought she would be great to lead KX into the next level. And then my passion is innovation. My passion is uh, growing this business and international expansion um, was now the, the areas that I kind of look at. Um, the company was founded in Australia, was it? Correct. Yeah, founded in Melbourne, uh, February 2010. Um, but what I've been working on the last couple of years is our own... So we're a reformer, uh, small group reformer Pilates. So 12 to 14 people per class, but we, we customize a generic Pilates machine. Um, and our style is quite different than what's out there. So we, I've always had the, this dream of making my own machine. Um, I talked about it for the first six years of KX. I had no time to do it. And then randomly, just as I was, uh, looking about where I can do this. You know, a few manufacturers had saw the growth that we'd achieved in Australia and reached out to me. Um, so I'd been working uh, with one manufacturer out of China for probably 18 months. Uh, I equate that to over probably a thousand emails, um, thousands of WhatsApp messages and, and WeChats as they, as they do. We built a really, really good relationship and, and they, really, um, they, they really specialize in customized machines. I'm, uh, we I'm did curious, three did, prototypes. Did you, go, did you go over to China or? Did. Yes, yes. Yes, me and my wife, Andy, we flew to Shanghai and, uh, and Guangzhou. Okay. Uh, probably the start of last year. Yep. That was testing our second prototype. Um, and look, I won't bore you with all the details, but probably <laughs> $250,000 in. Our third prototype we thought we'd nailed. Uh, we purchased 55 to then bring into company studios here in Melbourne. Uh, super excited, launched them to the whole network here at KX. You know, this is the next sort of phase of KX. And then, um, yeah, the first two weeks, uh, they just started breaking. Like we didn't realize the quality that we had from our previous American manufacturer of the machines we've been making um, and how simple they were. I made these ones extremely complicated uh, and just the simplest things, even like coming down to the quality materials used uh, were just no match. So, you know, it was a really, really hard pill to swallow. Um, I, I stood in front of my owners this year at the conference, basically said, you know, I've failed a lot of times, but I've never failed so many times in the shortest amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know what? I just pick myself up and keep going, luckily. Um, so you know, do you, so you, had stock, you had stock that you couldn't use that you'd ordered already from these manufacturers don't you or? no we were using them but we were constantly having to fix them yeah which is something obviously that i didn't want to do and luckily they were in my studio so i could i could navigate you know yeah. keeping clients happy and giving free classes back to them etc etc and also on one side paying a, a great company here in melbourne to constantly go out and fix them all the time yeah, yeah sure. um so my dream of expanding those out to the entire network had failed uh but at the same time you know i think everything happens for a reason I was talking to my old manufacturer at the same time here in Australia, who's, who's linked over to uh, 
to the American company. Um, and they basically said, hey, I know you're having troubles. It's going to cost you a lot more than going through China, but I think we can work together. Um, so mm. the last six months, nine months, I've been working with my American manufacturer to create um, a really exciting machine that uh, we're just about to launch into testing in October, which is super exciting. Um, and I know the quality is going to be there. Uh, and yeah, we're just pumped because it's in, uh, so, so our, our manufacturer is Balanced Body, uh, but uh, in, in, in 50 years of their own business, they've never done an exclusive deal um, with, with anyone uh, around the world. So that's super exciting for us. Um, especially okay. as people start trying to copy KX as well. So it's a, it's a great thing for us to have exclusivity so people can't model us exactly going forward. And, okay, and talk to me about the, the journey. Like I've been in business for 10 years as well, but I, I think the first two, three years was like, it was a sort of a side hustle thing. And then, you know, it's, it slowly started to get going. I'm happy that I've been in the game for 10 years, but it certainly hasn't just been consistent growth. Um, when did when did you really uh, notice that, that you know the business was going to have some legs and um, when did you decide to use a franchise model yeah so look i knew i knew in london that i wanted to bring bring the style of fitness back and do it under my own brand and 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 what i thought was make it better um which i believe i've done but i always knew i wanted to go to franchise because i learned firsthand in london that um trainers and clients were the first ones reaching out saying hey I want to do something similar. Like I was getting approached by by clients all the time saying, Hey, I've got the money. You've got the expertise. Let's go and start our own, our own company doing this thing. So, um, our boss over in London said no to any single discussion about joining forces with her franchising wasn't on the cards for her. Um, and, and my little knowledge of franchising, I knew that I needed something where, you know, a trainer's mentality in the fitness space as well, that they always want their own thing at the end of the day. So, but they, they know very little about business. So if I can teach them about business and they can bring their training mentality in, it was a great fit for us. Um, mm. Year one was really hard. So 2010 was a really lonely year. Um, for instance, our average, comp our average studios uh, make about 40, 45,000 in revenue a month. I made 6,000 in my first month, 8,000 in my second, 12,000 in my third. Uh, it took me 12 months to get to, I think, 15,000. Uh, which was a really hard slog. I was working 40 classes a week, plus the marketing, plus the admin, plus you know everything else to do with the business. It was very lonely. Uh, I loved training people, but then they walked out of the studio, I was by myself again. So it was a really hard slog. Also, because no one knew the style of fitness in Australia. Um, again, Pilates was rehab from physios. Um, so it was a brand new style of fitness that I was attempting to bring in. The price points were all over the shop, which I had to get right. I had no idea about business myself. As I said before, I failed everything at university. So I had to learn, throw myself in entrepreneur groups and really kind of grow my knowledge base of everything to do with business. So it was really, really tough. Um, 18 months in, I opened my second studio and that was just off a second bank loan. Uh, it wasn't off the profits of the first or anything. Uh, and it wasn't until my, one of my trainers sat down uh, in year two and basically said, hey, I love what's happening and I want to get involved. So we opened Studio 345 as a partnership. Wow. Uh, where I was focusing then on the franchise documentation. I loved classic entrepreneur, loved opening the studios, the flashing lights. But then as soon as it started running, I was like, right, boring. You can handle that. So our deal was that I opened them and she ran them. She did a great job. And uh, the name of KX started really building. What really helped us back then as well was the group buying platform. So the scoop ons, the jump on it, the, the group ons. Okay. Um, so my trainers, I paid if there was two people per class or 12. So if I could fill that, that class with, you know, raging fans who go up and tell everyone else, and these, these companies had huge databases back then, it was great for me. So um, that really catapulted us and we doubled our revenue in the first month of doing a deal there. Um, Brilliant. We used them for a few years afterwards as well for opening studios. So three years in, started franchising. Um, so that's when the legs started to come, uh, okay. when we started getting a groove. Okay. And along the way, have there been some other entrepreneurs that um, have inspired you um, or mentored you at all? Um, yeah, look, I have had mentors along the way. I mean, I joined, uh, I, do, I did join the Entourage's first oh, yeah. group back in 2010 uh, that was in Melbourne that is no longer. Um, so that was fantastic for me, having no idea about anything. Uh, they've grown into a huge beast now, but back then it was really personalized. Probably would have been. And they could really... Best. 
they could really sit down and, and go through your business. There was only six of us in this group that we met monthly for a year and it was just brilliant. Um, you know, Stewie Cook, who was the ex-CEO of Zambrero, uh, oh, yeah. I know now is involved with FitStop. He was a really good mentor to me at the beginning because, you know, when you're wanting to franchise, there's companies out there who will charge you a couple hundred thousand to get everything ready. And he sat back and went, no, nah, we can do this together yeah. uh, and you can do it yourself, which is great. Um, I had strategic, strategic mentors and strategic um, coaches as well that I paid along the way, which were mm. fantastic from, you know, the ex-gym space, uh, Jets Gyms, one of my guys was from that uh, he'd seen success there and we implemented a lot. And then uh, I've been a member of EO, Entrepreneurs Organization, since 2014. Okay. I started up in Sydney when I moved up to take KX up in Sydney. So, um, and that's just great. I mean, to be around people who have been there, done that, all support each other. Um, that's been fantastic for me as well. And, you know, there's constant learnings. And, and yeah. uh, as I was saying, that was a call yesterday with the co-founder of Netflix. It's brilliant. So, Yeah, awesome. Yeah, no, I, I found I had a similar experience. My first year in business, I found quite isolating. Um, and then as you get some friends that get it, I was actually talking to Jack Delosa from the Entourage about this exact topic. Um, you, need, you need people around you that, that understand um, I think, and um, it's, yeah, I'm, I've heard of good things about the EO as well. Um, so if you had to pick one of the traits or habits that you could attribute to your success so far in business that you think, um, you know, some of the viewers might get some value out of, what would you say, you know, with the top two or three traits would be that make a good entrepreneur? Yeah, sure. Look, I've always said that I'm not very good at many things. Uh, the one thing that I do think I'm good at is, um, is the relationship part. So building relationships, getting people to, I mean, it started back in the personal training days as well. Like when I first got thrown in my first three months of the gym world, I wasn't allowed to train anyone. I had to, my six hour shifts back then, all I had to do was go up to random people and talk to them. And I hated it. The first two weeks I was hiding in the toilets. I was like, this is the worst job ever. I have to walk up to random people, introduce myself and just ask them how their day is, how they're training. But I couldn't physically personal train them or do any, you know, any, any measurements for them or anything. But that really taught me, um, A, how to connect with people really, really quickly, how to get them to like you really quickly and warm to you. It's, it's also comes with the passion of me wanting to help people and really, you know, I love people in general. So I'm a massive people's person and, and I feed off other people's energy. So that was good for me. It was a great learning experience. Then that translated into starting my own business. I could walk into any single small business in my community, really connect with the business owner and create great referral programs and strategic partnerships really well. I will basically walk in and go, great, how can I help you? How can I send my clients to you? And know that it was going to come back my way. Um, and then it moved into, obviously, my, my passion for people in fitness went from my passion in people with franchising and, and them starting their own business. I, I just had this and still do love the feeling when my owners open their own business for the first time, it's been a dream of theirs to have their own business, but they've never, you know, gone all that way before. And just, yeah. you know, I've had tears, hug. it's been, it's an incredible experience. So and, and, and how the they, relationship and sorry, go on. I was just going to say, and franchising is relationships. That That's yeah. basically what it is. Um, so it's that for one thing is, uh, is, is something that I've, I've learned how to get oh, better at as well. Yeah. And, and like, given the, the um, economic climate this year, um, how have your franchisees been impacted and what kind of, um, you know, involvement have you had with some of the ones that have been affected by COVID? Yeah, well, this is going back, I was going to say my second point to, hmm. uh, to speak to entrepreneurs is, is resilience. Um, to know that you need to adapt quickly. Uh, it's not the strongest that will survive. It's the fastest to adapt, as Darwin once said. So it's, and I fully believe that in business. And, um, and that's what we did. We, we pulled everyone together in lockdown one. Uh, I'm not sure if, if everyone remembers lockdown one, but in the fitness space, we were told on, on a Sunday night that we were closing at lunchtime the next day. Like that's how much we had time to pick up the phone call and go, right, what the hell are we doing? I was so fortunate that A, we had a team already in place in head office that were growing the business fantastically. Um, and my wife as well, having her experience in marketing and, and she needs some control of the systems here. We were able to pivot our entire offering to an online experience pretty quickly and done extremely professionally. You know, a lot of these guys were jumping on Facebook or Instagram Live where we did it all professionally through our app, through Zoom, and it just made the entire experience for our clients great. Um, you know, it was really hard. We, had, we closed 68 studios in lockdown one. 
Um, Melbourne went through it for 13 weeks. Uh, we were, I think all the other states opened a little bit earlier than, uh, earlier than Melbourne. Um, but then Melbourne studios were open for three weeks. Studios were pumping. We had 15 people on every waiting list. It was just amazing, which is a great feeling to know that when we do come back out of this, you know, people are wanting to get fit again, but you know, and then we had to close our doors again. We had one owner who opened her first, her, it's not her first studio, but she opened a new studio five days later closed. So um, this time around, we've got half of our studios that are out of VIX. There are 35 studios that are closed. We've still got our online offering. So um, we have premium access, which is pre-recorded videos. We have our live classes, which are small live classes with trainers to really uh, hold that personalized boutique feel that we have in studios, but in your lounge room. Uh, and we've got an at-home challenge that's, uh, that's just started as well. So 30 days, uh, 12 classes in 30 days, just to try and get people back into the routine of, uh, and I'm not sure about you, but first lockdown, I was, I was drinking more, I was exercising less, <laughs> I was stressed, I was angry. Yeah. Uh, this lockdown, I mean, you need to learn, you need to be resilient, you need to learn, right, we've been through this. You know, the hardest part for me now, looking after the kids is I have no kinder, I have no childcare. So like, and every day I've got to go left or right, which way are we going? Are we riding scooters? Are we riding bikes? We've got to be back in an hour. It's, yeah. it's tougher, but at the same time, you know, it's our normal right now. So we've oh, got to well, to it's, it. it's so good to hear that, um, you know, you've given the support to those smaller businesses. Um, I was uh, interviewing the founder of Jim's Mowing a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I mean, he's got 4,000 odd franchisees that aren't allowed, to, aren't allowed to mow lawns at the moment for some reason. <laughs> he can't understand it. Um, but uh, it's good to hear that, um, you know, that you are giving them those resources and helping them. I, I, I imagine that you'll probably come out of this with more market share, given that you're the one, you know, that was innovating and communicating with the, with the audience when a lot of your competitors probably weren't. Correct. And you know what? As soon as we shut down, I had two things to my team. Number one, stay afloat so we can get through this. So my finance guy, my financial controller is being smashed and he is changing the cash flow forecasts every day when something else. And that's been the hardest part is the unknown. Usually you can plan for a lot of things and look ahead and, and you can pivot pretty easily. But when there's, you can't see the end in sight, yeah. uh, it's, it's very, very hard. And second was to stay relevant. We need to be at the front of our clients' minds. We need to be there for our clients. Yes, we're all going through hard times, but you know, um, we have businesses to fall back on. Our clients you know, could have lost their jobs, you don't know what situation they're in. So hence, at the beginning as well, we went through a premium, which you paid for it, and also a free access for the people who didn't have the money to pay for, for exercise as well. So Brilliant. again, being front of clients' minds and just you know, being there for them, reaching out to them. We had, we've got owners just calling up their clients to ask how they are, and that's it. No other, no sales call, nothing. It's literally just a, a hey, ha, ha, hope everything's going and can't wait for you to get back in the studio, which I think is why when we did go back in the middle of these three lockdowns, it was crazy and every studio outside of victoria now is pumping yeah. uh, which is fantastic to see and everyone's really good yeah excellent um so what are you excited about in the business world at the moment yeah look as i explained before my machines are machines, well, our yeah. machines are um are really really exciting um I'm really really confident that it's going to you know uh really excel the business uh, really hold the ip going forward as well um international expansion is something I, i'm really you know, being a traveler myself. Um, so we've, we've been in heavy discussions with China. Uh, I've got a partner over in China uh, okay. that we've been working closely with. Um, so a few things on the, on the horizon there. Our training facility is already opened. We're looking to open a few studios there before the end of the year. And, and you know, being China, it's a huge market and really, really exciting. We've actually had to pause on all of our other international talks just so we can focus on China for 18 to 24 months. Um, we've got a studio in Jakarta at the moment. Uh, okay. That's been there for two years. And our partner there, she's just about to open two more in the next six months. Again, really exciting times of everyone moving out of COVID around the world and, and how fitness and, and wellness is, is on the rise. Um, you know, yeah. people didn't think it was important before. They're definitely going to think uh, it's important going forward. Absolutely. Big wake up call. Um, so given that the series is called LinkedIn Heroes, I have an important question to ask, um, which is, if you could be a superhero, who would you be and why? And is it the person, is it the guy on the wall behind you? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, I was going to change them over, actually. Um, and, and I will, if you don't mind me just getting off for a second, because it's just a really cool painting. Um, so cool. I'm in my, in my son's room. 
But um, he's got these super cool uh, graphic paintings. But awesome. this is what who I would be. Super uh, bad. Now I'm I'm addicted to travel, uh, and I just love the idea that not only the strength, but just me. You got to fly. If you can fly, you can be anywhere you want at any time and and go. Uh, so that that would definitely be. Forget the name. It's just about flying. If you give me another character that can fly, I'll do it. But um, well, well, yeah, that's, that, that's Superman. Superman's the one superhero who's doesn't um, his disguise is being human, and, but he's super normally. Whereas the other superheroes, they all have to put on the costume to become super. So correct. He's humble. Good. I like that about him. Good choice. I like that. Good choice. Oh, look, Aaron. Thanks for sharing your story with us. I think um, we we all got a lot of value out of that. Um, talking about the importance of business relationships, the importance of resilience, and just sharing how you've overcome some of those growth challenges that you've, you've encountered and now the new um, journey that you're on with the international expansion and, and the mach machinery. I think that, um, I think that uh, we, we can all get a lot of value out of that. I think the challenges, correct me if I'm wrong, but like I think the challenges in business, they don't really stop, do they? I mean, it doesn't matter how, you know, how big you get, there's, there's just challenges become bigger, don't they? And you're hundred percent right. I was going for a run yesterday and I was like, when I was actually thinking the exact same thing to myself, that the bigger your business gets, the bigger your problems get mm. in our world. The more, the more people we get under our brand, the more opinions that we have, the more people we have to try and keep happy. So yeah, that was in my, the back of my mind. But then again, the, pe the people who sell their businesses for, you know, double the amount in 10 years time than they would have got today is because they've lasted another 10 years of all the problems and all the hardships and, you know, the work's probably twice as hard as they ever have to get there as well. So, yeah. um, yes, you're hundred percent right. It never gets easy, but at the same time, it's the, one of the most rewarding journeys uh, you can ever go on. And I'm just so grateful and appreciative that, uh, that KX has been successful and, and is successful and it will continue to be, you know, with, with the hard work. So, yeah. Aaron, um, if people want to follow you um, on social media or otherwise, where's the best place to find you and KX? Sure. So KX is at KX Pilates, uh, all, all of the handles of all the socials. I'm, I'm a bit of a personal, personal man, so I, I really don't post too much on, on my socials. Uh, I've got my LinkedIn, which is more of the business sense. Um, so it's very easy to find. If you just type in Aaron Smith and KX, it's, it will come up straight away. So uh, LinkedIn, that, that's where I really push. Has LinkedIn been any good for um, like sourcing franchisees and stuff? Um, it, it has been okay. But at the same time, we're very much, we recruit internally. So you need to love our brand, I see. love our style of fitness, which is why it comes back down to our trainers or our clients are basically our owners moving forward. So uh, mm. we don't spend too, too much money on, on external um, recruiting. Uh, a lot of it comes, comes from within, which is fantastic. Well, excellent. Um, seems to be working for you. Congratulations on all of your success and uh, make sure you follow KX on, uh, I would imagine Instagram would be a popular one, but um, check them out on all the social platforms Correct. wherever you hang out. And um, we'll see you on the next episode of LinkedIn Heroes. Let us know what you thought in the comments below. Share the episode with your friends and thanks for watching. Thank you very much for having me. That's a wrap. I'll stop the recording.